Could you share with us your favorite or worst moments before the Supreme Court? Mm. I know you're prepared for this. Okay, this I'll start with you, uh, Professor Freed, please. Uh, my worst moment, I remember vividly, uh, <laughs> having <laughs> argued the independent counsel case, Morrison v. Olson, and having argued that the independent counsel statute was unconstitutional, which it was, uh, uh, and having, uh, having argued that uh, to a court that was remarkably silent. Uh, they, uh, the courtroom was packed, uh, and including with senators and all sorts of other such people. Uh, I think Justice Stevens, out of pity, asked one question. Uh, and then the time came for the decision to be handed down, and I sat there, and uh, Chief Justice Rehnquist handed down the decision, uh, and uh, uh, we, had, uh, uh, we had lost it seven to one, but Justice Scalia's dissent was the correct position. <laughs> which is, I think, something that the Congress and the country and maybe in the, co the court would today agree. Uh, so we may have lost the battle, but we won the war. But I remember coming away from that argument and calling up my dentist, who had <laughs> told me that there was a tooth I had to have pulled. And I said, do you suppose if I came in now, you could do it? <laughs> He said yes, and he did. <laughs> Lots of favorite moments. Probably the worst moment was um, when I'm arguing along, and you sort of know whether you're in stride or you're struggling, and I, pride precedes a fall. I thought I was in stride, and all of a sudden, I said something, and they have switches on the microphone. Chief Justice Rehnquist, who I thought had been enjoying my stride, lunges, switches on his microphone and says, General, are you saying that Oklahoma Publishing versus Walling should be overruled? I'd never heard of Oklahoma Publishing versus Walling. I was clueless, but I knew what the answer was. Emphatically not, Your Honor. Now, as I was saying, you know, and you just hope he doesn't. Then it would be very embarrassing. And could you explain why? <laughs> Well, I'll start with my favorite moment. I have several unpleasant recollections. I was trying to uh, sell uh, the notion of congressional power before a court that thought states' rights were really important. And so I have scars to show as a result of those cases. <laughs> Unfortunately, my students at Yale, given the advance in technology, can remind me of some of those cases uh, on a daily basis. Oh, you argued X versus Y. And I say yes, hang my head and go on. Uh, but I argued a case that raised the question of whether the courts martial system of the United States was unconstitutional. Uh, it involved two fellows who had been prosecuted uh, by military courts. One fellow thought that shipping marijuana from Peru by wrapping kilos around turbines that were being shipped back to the United States was a great idea. I think he's still spending out his uh, last five years of a 30-year sentence. Uh, but in any event, uh, during the argument, uh, Justice Blackman looked down at my opposing counsel. This was early in the argument. And he said, counsel, can you explain to the court why this issue has not arisen before in 200 years? And my mental reaction was, yes, <laughs> because it went downhill thereafter. And the court said that uh, these proceedings were absolutely constitutional. So uh, that was a very good feeling. I had some other good feelings as well, but that one I remember particularly. By the way, there were uh, students uh, in the audience who went around trying to figure out why this general was uh, arguing before the court. Uh, but anyhow, <laughs> they got the explanation later. Great. Uh, I, I generally block out the really bad moments or else I wouldn't be able to do what I do and go back up again. <laughs> Um, I, I can remember um, one argument which was sort of a low point in general was in a case called Massachusetts versus EPA, which was the so-called global warming case. Um, and, and I knew it was going to be a bad morning when I was driving up to the court, and it was a, a late November day, but it was 
unseasonably warm in Washington, D.C. And I could see people walking around in t-shirts and shorts. And I thought, you know, this is about the worst thing that could happen on the day that the global warming case was going to be argued. And in the morning about, you know, went about as, uh, as I feared it would with Justice Souter seemingly screaming at me nonstop for about 30 minutes. And I'm still convinced we would have won that case if it snowed that day. Um, it, another interesting argument experience I had um, was I, I, as Solicitor General, I argued a case called FCC versus Fox, which was about um, the FCC's rule uh, against the use of indecent language on TV and the use of the, the, the F word and the S word. And, um, we'd received a, a call from the clerk a few days before the oral argument, um, which is very unusual, and uh, saying, um, oh, you know, I know you're going to be arguing the, uh, the FCC case. Um, by the way, the, the justices, um, you know, they're generally familiar with the facts in the case, and they don't really like some of the language that's being, some of them do, so don't feel like you have to use the language. And you know, as, as the government for the attorney, the attorney for the government, I thought that that was a great thing that some of the justices did not want to hear the language. But during the oral argument, um, you know, that I had this sort of um, great fear that somehow I was going to let slip one of these words. <laughs> Um, and, and, you know, be the one who said something. And, you know, there are a lot of things that go through your mind at oral argument, and I did not want that to get out. And so that was an unusual one. Unfortunately, I, I did not make news on that respect. Well, you used the term F-bomb. I did use the term <laughs> F-bomb, which is, would probably be the only time I'll use that term in the Supreme Court. <laughs> Ed? Uh, well, I, uh, I think I've had a lot of bad experiences, and I block them out the way, uh, the way Greg does because it, it is best to forget some of them, and actually, the ones that the one the ones that came to mind were really uh, not in major cases, but they were really uh, I wasn't prepared, uh, and and that and that's like the biggest fear. I mean, you you want to win your case, but you also don't want to look foolish. And my very first argument it was about the defense uh, the the defense of necessity and uh, duress to prison escape, and I steeped myself in the, in, the, uh, in the common law of all that. And very early in the argument, Justice White asked me, why do we have the authority to impose common law defenses? I don't see anything in this statute that incorporates any common law uh, defenses. Uh, and it, it was just a lesson that even though all the lower courts had been treating it that way, you have, to, you have to go back to first principles in the Supreme Court because they're not just going to take the existence of the law. And, you know, in retrospect, it was an obvious question, but I just hadn't been thinking it through uh, sufficiently. And then the other one was a question I got from Justice Brennan, who very rarely asked a question. And it was a very obscure case about um, Indian law and, and a, a, a case in, in a, a district court. And it had, the appeal had gone to the Eighth Circuit. Uh, and about halfway through the argument, Justice Brennan leans forward and says, basically, why wasn't this appeal properly taken? Shouldn't it have been taken to the Federal Circuit? He was like three words into his sentence. And I thought to myself, oh my god. There's, you know, there's not even jurisdiction in the, in the, in the, in the Court of Appeals. And, and it, it's one of those terrifying moments because you're, you know, your whole case goes away. And why on earth didn't you think of it? And you know, you're, my, my mind was just churning. And I um, sort of came out with an answer. Uh, and they, they ended up finding jurisdiction on very strained grounds. <laughs> Having heard argument in the case, in a case that was a marginal cert grant, I think they decided they'd invested enough in it to go ahead, but boy, to, to be asked a, a question about jurisdiction, they, not just something on the margins, but very fundamental, uh, it was pretty terrifying. So I, tr I try to ask myself before every argument, okay, is there jurisdiction? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, please join me in thanking these great lawyers. Thank you.